Hello and welcome to Coding Challenge, the chaos game, Pop Du, Electric Boogaloo. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, thank you to um, Espen Larson, Dr. Circuit on Twitter, for creating the I Will Refactor This Later song. This coding challenge is in honor of that song because guess what? Later is now. I will refactor this now. So what I'm going to do in this coding challenge is expand this idea of the chaos game. Um, instead of merely creating the Sierpinski triangle, I'm going to make a version of this where there could be more than three points, uh, seed points, and that as the points move, as the newly random point move moves from point to point to point, <laughs> um, uh, I, I might move by a different percentage than 50%. So if you didn't watch the previous coding challenge where I made this, you could pause now and go watch that, or you could just stay here with me right now. Let's be together, let's be friends on the internet, programming stuff. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do to refactor this, I really want to play the song again, but I'm not going to overdo it. I'm going to use it sparingly. Otherwise, people will get irritated and annoyed, and I'm sure I will hear about it. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I am going to make an array called seed. Maybe I should call it seed points. Let's just call it points. I don't know. Let's call it points. Um, and instead of having AX, AY, what I'm going to do in this array, let's get rid of this. First, I just want to recreate this exactly. I am going to uh, say I'm going to have three points. And uh, I'm going to create a new point, which is a vector. I'm going to use vec the create vector function to make a new point anywhere randomly in the canvas. I know I've run a little bit out of space here, but that's fine. Um, come on, a little bit further over. Ah, oh, there's my semicolon. Um, and then I'm going to say points push v. Okay, and then I am going to have a point called current, which is also going to be uh, a vector, a random vector. And I'm gonna, there we go. There we go. So now what I can do is, again, I have just refactored this to instead of having separate x, y variables for all four points, I have an array that keeps my three seed points, and I have my current point in, and all, all current point is a separate variable, and both of those are p5 vectors, a vector being an object that can hold an x, a y, and a z. But I'm not going to use a z right now, although you could do this in 3D. Oh, you should. You should do this in 3D. <laughs> but I'm not going to. All right, so then I'm going to say, uh, for a uh, let p of points, and I'm going to say uh, point p dot x, p dot y. So we should see, there we go. Those are my first three c points. And then what I'm going to do here is random uh, the length. And this is actually now, oh, you know what? I don't even need to do this. Guess what? The random function in p5. I'm going to say like next equal the random function in p5 will give me a random object out of that array. Now, if I want to pick them with a different probability, I'd have to do something different. But here, this next is now going to be one of those three points randomly. And then all I need to do is say stroke. I'm going to still give it this color. Um, and then I'm going to say uh, uh, next.x equals a lerp this. So I'm lerping, but I'm going to lerp between next and, uh, and the current. Oh, and current is the result of that. So the current is the thing that's moving. And it really doesn't matter, but I like to think of it in this order. Current is moving. And there, I think there's a, actually lerp vector function. So I could do this in one line of code. That's another refactor this later. No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so there we go. And uh, then all I need to do is draw the point. Let's give, uh, all I need to do is draw that point. And here we go. Look at this. Ta-da! Now, one thing I should probably do is also uh, reset it. Um, let's write, a, let's actually, all of this stuff here um, is kind of the process of Let's write a function of resetting. Like I want right now, it's like resetting every time I change the code because the P5 editor is configured to like relaunch the sketch. But I think what I would prefer to do here is write my own function called reset. This is a nice refactoring. 
<laughs> and uh, I need to empty the array. And I'm going to say points equals here. So this function reset will just sort of reseed the environment. And I could do something. I could do it whenever I click the mouse. But just for right now, I could say if frame count modulus like 100 equals 0, then uh, reset. So what that's going to do is every 100 frames, right? Because a modulus of the number 100 will equal 0 any time the frame count is divisible by 100 with a remainder of 0. So you can see. Um, over and over again, this is going to, so no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I have refactored this. But now that I have refactored this, there are so many possibilities. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, so for example, I can just do this. No, oh, yeah, look. <laughs> now, interestingly enough, I don't really get a pattern that's super interesting to look at with four points. Kind of accidentally, I sometimes am. Um, and so what happens if I have eight points? Whoa, this is crazy. Now, probably what I would want to do, what might make sense for me to do, is place these points around a circle. Just, I mean, it's interesting to have them randomly, but I think I would prefer, just in sort of figuring out what I want to do with this, to have all those points around a circle, right? So you can think about it, actually, this was a way of getting my equilateral triangle that I was looking for. So what if I have eight points, uh, and then I get some kind of like, hexagon, octagon, septagon, whatever the number of sides is based on the number of points. All right, so what I'm going to do here actually is uh, I'm going to have a fixed set of points, right? So the points are, I'm just going to do once in setup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the constant. Const n equals 8. And I know I could be using const in other places of the code. And if you want to know more about const, I made a video about it where I got a bunch of things wrong that you can watch. So you might find a different resource for that. Um, but so I just, now I'm making n points. And what I'm going to do is say the angle is 2 pi divided by i. That's a bad idea because I don't want to divide by 0. Um, so, uh, all right, we'll, we'll say, um, oh, it's, I know what it is. It's i times 2 pi divided by n. That's what it is, right? Because I want to have, I'm looking for, and if, uh, look, if, if n is 4, for example, I want 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. It's probably going to go the other way because the screen is flipped, but that's the idea. So now what I'm going to do is say create vector at um, uh, some number, like let's just do 200 times cosine of the angle. Oh, you know what? I think there's p5 vector from p5 dot vector from angle, I think is a function. Angle. So that's going to make a vector from that angle. And then I can say v dot, um, uh, v, uh, v dot uh, multiply 100. And that's working, but I need to uh, translate to width divided by 2, height divided by 2. And now we have these points in the center. Of course, I also, if I want to, I need to do that here. Okay, so there we go. We can see now I've created eight points around, and let's actually use, um, let's make that a little, ooh, why is this down here? Oh, oh, there's a weird mistake, goofy mistake happening. Ugh. Oh, because when I reset, this is, this is kind of, you know what I'm going to do? The translate is fine, but it's bothering me. I'm just going to make life easier on myself and say add width divided by 2, height divided by 2. Right? I'm just going to move that to the center manually by adding that to the vector. Okay. Now what I want to do is multiply it by like width divided by 2 or something. Okay, great. <laughs> so now you see those are all my points. We're still playing the chaos game. Now what I want to do is I am going to have a variable called percent. And I also, I just want to make like a lot more points really quickly so I can just sort of see the pattern. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I am going to try, I'm going to, when I lerp, I'm going to lerp by that percent. And let's try uh, different values. So let's try, so let's go back to 0.5. And this is what I get. 
Let's try 0.25. Interesting. Let's try 0.1. Let's try an n of 4. 0.25. All right, I'm back. Um, Nico Monsoon in the chat said, try three just to see if you didn't break anything. So I made the point n equals, I made n equal three with a percentage of 0.5, and we can see I have the Sierpinski triangle. Um, actually, if you look on the Wikipedia page for Chaos Game, you'll start to see a bunch of these. A point inside a square repeatedly jumps half the distance towards a randomly chosen vertex, but the currently chosen vertex cannot be two places away from the previously cho chosen vertex. So this is interesting, right? So I could actually start to create some of these patterns by modifying how I pick a particular point. So this one actually would be nice. Let's do the pentagon one. A point inside a pentagon repeatedly jumps half of the distance, but the current chosen vertex cannot be the same. This is gonna be an easy one for us to implement. We just need to get a new random number that's not the same as the previous one. So, um, so let's go back here. Let's first make this five. Okay, so we can see even with five, a pentagon, we're kind of getting a somewhat of an interesting uh, pattern here. And I might, I don't know why I obsess over this sort of stuff, but I kind of feel like, um, let's give this just like a little bit of alpha and make the stroke weight a one and do like a thousand points. All right, so we can just sort of see this pattern more quickly. <clears throat> okay, now. What was I doing? Ah, so what I want to do now is not allow the next point to be the same as what was previously chosen. And so there's a variety of ways I could do this, but actually I could just create a way of, um, I could just create a way of ignoring it if it happens to be the same one. So let's say um, previous, I'm going to create a variable called previous, and right here when I pick previous, equals next, and I'm going to say as long as next is not equal to previous, then I can do this stuff. So now look at this. There we go. The chaos game pentagon with one slight modification. And you know what? I, I don't want it to keep resetting. I just want it to, um, I want to tell it not to reset. And I want to go to share, full screen, and I'm going to put this in a different window, and we're going to bring this up here, and we're just going to enjoy this. Now, okay, here we go, we're done. Ah, chaos game, thank you very much. <laughs> um, look at this, it's so beautiful, and intricate, and amazing. Um, so I now encourage you, now you've really got something, right? You can start to make a variety of patterns and, and really, here's the thing. One thing that you could do that actually is, is really you could think about that I didn't do. If we go up here, look at this. This is actually a little uh, sort of animated GIF showing you the process of actually moving the points from one spot to another and then sort of branching out. So imagine what you could do if instead of just picking all the points and layering them, you actually created a system where you animate the process of building this pattern. Um, and you can see, uh, you can see, maybe you can recreate some of these other patterns by doing this rules. Um, this one would be a nice one to create. Um, you could try different percentages. Um, and see what you make. So thank you for uh, uh, watching this second part of the chaos game. I think we are done with all the chaos game stuff I'm gonna do. If you make your own version of this, please visit the codingtrain.com link that's in this video's description. There, there are instructions for how to submit a link to the version of the chaos game that you made yourself. Um, you can share with me your images or gifts on Twitter at Shiftman or at the coding train, um, hashtag coding chaos game. <laughs> And I'll see you in a future coding challenge, all right? Um, I don't know, maybe I will. Wait, 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 wait. Let's refactor this now. And actually, I'm not actually going to refactor it. I, I realized something. When I was playing with the percentage earlier and making it lower, I started to get much noisier images. And of course this is true because I'm not going very far. And so the points are sort of layering on top of each other. And I'm just getting kind of a cloud of points. But what if instead of going halfway there, and um, let's actually, I, don't, I know I'm being kind of a lunatic about this stuff, but let me just make these white. Um, instead of going halfway there, what if I go 
75% of the way there. So actually going further will start to yield some interesting patterns. And you can see here now if I say 15, look at this. So this is now 15 points going 75% of the way there. You know, and by the way, maybe if I were to make, oh, and that's 90% of the way there, if I were to make some sort of slider where I vary the number of points, I could go back to putting these points all in a random location. That would be kind of interesting. Oh, let's do that now. I'm just curious. Um, so where, where do I, oh, let's do this. Uh, let's just really quickly, I'm just curious to see. I gotta stop. You should, um, I shouldn't be doing this. You should be doing this. Right, so you can see, ah, okay, I don't know if that got it. So anyway, so that's, this is a clue to you of what you could now make, right, that I told you to share with me, right? You could vary that percentage, vary the number of points, vary where the seed point starts, animate, oh, so many possibilities, okay? See you later.